it's something about the black in front of anything that just makes it immediately scary. You know, it makes it already kind of noisy. I think that in, in its truest sense, like black noise and black music are synonymous. Black noise and black art are synonymous. Black noise and black people talking are synonymous. I'm Greg Tate. I'm the leader of Burn Sugar and the conductor and sometimes guitar player, one of the guitar players. And Burn Sugar is uh, now in its first decade, entering its second decade, I guess would be the best way to say it. Uh, we formed in 1999 and we came together to experiment with music, with improvised music, um, to try to see how we could renovate the language of improvisation to reflect the experiences of 21st century musicians. Black Rock Coalition, which um, uh, myself and Vernon Reed and Connie Mason, Craig Street, Jerry Allen, some other folks formed in 85, was uh, a support group, an activist organization that came together to support uh, black music, musicians in New York who were playing uh, a range of musics that didn't really fit into any category you know, into any box. And, uh, you know, we figured the freaks needed a clubhouse too, you know. And so we've been doing that for 25 years. This project is definitely, the focus is definitely on, uh, on improvisation, uh, conducting improvisation. But this project we're working on, LJ and Brown, is really more of a theatrical project with a concert element to it but it really is a uh, reflection on James' life you know, and uses the music as much as uh, narrative and dialogue to, to tell this story. Tonight is a, uh, it's like a little theater piece about James Brown. It's about um, how, well, it's a com it's, it, it kind of relates the rest of us to James in that, um, they're always trying to figure out a way how to sell us and market us and use us as a, a, some means of, of uh, raising capital. And, uh, and the play is about, you know, how James' spirit can't be sold. Well, we were actually commissioned to do a, a James Brown project by the Apollo. And um, that was, uh, was actually about two years ago. It took a while to uh, come together. We performed it last October. Um, and we developed it in the Apollo over about four days. And um, the thing with James Brown's music is that it's incredibly familiar to everybody in a cultural sense. You know what I mean? It's like if you black and you were, you know, born in the 50s, 60s, or 70s, I and mean, then James Brown is as familiar to you as like great soul and jumper. You know what I mean? I mean, he's just part of the, the, the cultural environment. That, that you know, we all came in the sonic environment. But there's a science to his, his music that the band had to really come to recognize and appreciate. Because everybody you found that thought they knew the music it was more difficult than they thought it was going to be. Because um, it sounds deceptive and simple, but it's like the timing, the dynamics, all these things, the emotionality of it. You know, I mean, all these things are really engineered into that sound. It sounds very spontaneous, but it's not. There's moments of spontaneity in it because when you have something that tight and everybody knows it, then you can start to embellish it and play with it. One of the things that we do with the show is that we kind of work with James's old sexual tension with some of his his, his backup singers, you know, it was something that really got played out in his um, music, the music he developed for some of those singers too, some of the solo joints. So there's a whole album called uh, James Brown's Original Funky Divas. You know, we kind of drew on things that um, would create a certain amount of equality in terms of presentation of women and men. And then we gave some of the, the songs that you associate um, with uh, with James, you know, um, like Hot Pants and I Don't Want Nobody, you know, we gave those to some of the, the featured uh, women solos in the band. 
Black noise is a phenomenon. It's a happening. It's a place, it's a space where I can express and connect with my people. Uh, black noise uh, reference things that were somewhat abstract but had a lot of history behind them. So you had to take time to understand them. Uh, Sun Ra uh, was black noise to me. Um, again, uh, Rasan Roland Kirk was black noise to me. These things made me go deeper into the music all the time. I, I feel like in the writing that's pretty much uh, is is almost like the uh, uh, that's that's the description or definition of my career. You know what I mean in terms of writing about um, uh, the the various streams of of uh, black consciousness, black identity that come out in all these cultural forms. I mean that's pretty much what I've been doing for the last 25, 30 years and just using music or theater or film, I mean, in the, in the realm of criticism, you know what I mean, cultural criticism, um, you know, using that format to just talk about this diversity of the experience in the various communities that, that, um, that frame and kind of provoke and produce the art and then, you know, really looking at the talents that have emerged you know, in that time. And, um, what they have to say about um, the continuity of the culture and, and, and the ruptures too, you know, and the, the evolution and metamorphosis, you know. Um, and, um, yeah, I mean, I'm a witness, <laughs> basically. So you ask me, like, what, what's my function? Yeah, that's what it is. Black, 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 black